Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Internet, it's that time again. That special time that occurs just about once every month. No, my Aunt Flo is not in town. I'm talking, of course, about the Indie Royale. IndieGames.com and Desura have teamed up once again to bring us another Indie Royale bundle. This time around, we're celebrating the season of life, rebirth, and nasal congestion. That's right, guys, it's time for the Spring Bundle. This time around, the bundle is stacked with six amazing independent games. Starting things off is The Unstoppable Gorg, the tower defense game that uses a campy 1950s-style alien invasion flick as its inspiration and pulls it off perfectly. After that, we have the strategic action RPG Depths of Peril. You fight for control of the barbarian hordes in that classic and very familiar isometric overview. We also have retro-styled platformer Toby's Vertical Adventure, where our hero Toby embarks on a quest to collect jewels for his greedy, greedy girlfriend. Now, it's very likely that you've heard of one or all of those games. They're featured on Steam, they've also been seen on various internet game media outlets, and Toby's Vertical Adventure was featured in a video on this very channel. However, the last three games probably aren't on your radar. They come to us from one of my favorite independent games developers, Luke Schneider, aka Radian Games. The three titles in the spring bundle from Radian Games are not available on Steam, but quite frankly, this is just a great excuse to download and install Desura if you've never used it before. Radian's contribution to the bundle consists of Tetris inspired puzzle game Slidris, straightforward twin stick arena shooter Ballistic and atmospheric action RPG shooter, Inferno. Well, there's a plus sign on the end of Inferno, and I don't know if you pronounce that or not, so... Inferno. Plus sign. At this point, I've put a couple of hours into each one of these three titles, and I want to give you a basic overview, just to inform you. Hopefully this can inspire you to go ahead and pull the trigger on the bundle if you haven't, and if you've already bought the bundle, maybe this will inspire you to install these fantastic games and give them a chance. First up is Slidris. Let me go ahead and level with you first thing. When I took a look at this bundle, I immediately pegged Slidris as the throwaway game. I didn't think I was going to enjoy this game because frankly I'm not a big fan of this style of puzzle game. I sort of played out the whole vertical puzzle game thing when I had Tetris on the Game Boy when I was like 12. So I went into this game not all that optimistic that I would enjoy it, and upon my first playing I did not, in fact, enjoy this game. After about five minutes, I just quit. I couldn't take it anymore. I moved on to other things and came back to the game later. I was determined, I was resolute to figure this game out, and on a second playing, with a little patience, I began to understand the systems and how the game works, and with a little bit of self-training, I learned to look ahead and play within the game's structure, and this turned out to be a really, really good puzzle game. It was interesting in the mechanics that it used and the approach that it took. So let's talk about the mechanics that are at work in this game. You have a vertical column where you're stacking, well, I guess, bricks, essentially, and you can, once they're placed, slide them in the horizontal plane. What this means is that you can actually complete lines after bricks have already fallen. You can also slide bricks before they fall, so that you get them to fall in just the right place. You can slide one brick per turn, whether that's a brick that's already in your vertical stack or one that's waiting to fall. So you have to make very careful decisions, and indeed you have to think several moves ahead, as I've said before. This game really challenges your brain. It takes you out of that simple Tetris mindset, and you start looking at and thinking about all sorts of different possibilities and combinations as you move forward. It's a really, really brilliant but simple design that really had me going. I played this game for at least an hour during my second play session, and I was never bored. And each time, I learned from my mistakes, and I got better and better. Now, I don't know how often I'll go back to Slidrus, but I really enjoyed this game. And I would encourage you guys, if you're at first frustrated by the systems of this game, to take a break, come back later, and try it again. What you're going to find is that this is an interesting puzzle game that you haven't really ever played before, not in this exact form. 
Now the game doesn't have a lot of replay value unless you really, really just love the style of it or you really love puzzle games or just have to beat your highest score. But regardless of how much time you spend with this game, I think with just a little patience, you will have a very, very good time. Now let's move on to the first of our two dual stick shooters. This is Ballistic. This is a straightforward arena shooter that hits all the right notes. It's got a crap ton of enemies, some weapon variety, some basic upgrades, special powers, collectibles, all that good stuff. It is a very straightforward game, as I think I've said two or three times, and I want to reiterate that. Straightforward. It is a straightforward title. No frills, no fanciness going on here. You are a ship that is essentially a circle, and you are being attacked by enemies that are also essentially differently colored circles. You shoot, you kill them, you collect score, you collect power-ups, and that's pretty much all there is to this game. It's a challenge, how many waves can you last, how high a score can you get. Now the things that they do in here that set themselves apart from an extremely simplified arena shooter are, you can collect multipliers, you can collect extra lives, and you can collect bombs around the area that actually allow you to decimate large numbers of enemies. At the beginning of the game and every 10 waves thereafter, you get the chance to pick an upgrade. These upgrades do things like make your gun shoot faster, allow you to remotely detonate those bombs I was talking about, and let you spend more time in the game's special firing mode, ballistics mode. When you're in ballistics mode, you go very, very slowly, but your gun shoots very, very fast. The bottom line is I had a really good time with this game. Whether I was tweaking my upgrades to get the perfect loadout for my playstyle, or sitting there mouth agape, not able to believe that I just finished the wave that seemed impossible just moments before, or whether I was just sitting there listening to the great in-game music, no matter what I was doing, I was really having fun. I think you'll enjoy this game even if it's limited replayability doesn't necessarily keep it installed on your hard drive all the time, you might find yourself coming back to it once a week, once a month, whatever, just for some great, pure dual stick shooting. And finally, let's talk about Inferno. Plus sign. Um, I'm just gonna call it Inferno. So let's talk about Inferno. This game takes the basic principles of ballistic and layers on top of that maze-like levels and RPG elements. As you embark on your shoot 'em up adventure, you're given a choice between one of several different types of ship. Then you go out and you slaughter enemies. You collect gold, you come to the shop, you buy upgrades. Those upgrades can allow you to tweak the ship to function in a way which works best with your playstyle. You can also purchase items. Those items are anything from bombs to little drones that hover around you and fire automatically at enemies that might be nearby. Those drones come in really handy later on when you might not quite be paying enough attention to that guy who's sneaking up behind you. Your sneaky little drone will turn around and shoot that guy right in the face. As your adventure continues, enemies will increase in numbers, difficulty, and variety. A lot of interesting enemy types in there, including enemies that shoot at you. Eventually, those shooting enemies up the ante with homing shots. It gets really interesting and really hectic at times. If Ballistic was a little too much for you, a little too overwhelming, you'll find yourself very at home in Inferno. Now, you will get overwhelmed at times, but you'll always feel in control. Your drones watch out for you, you have the ability to shield yourself, and you can occasionally do a screen-clearing bomb. Now, I must admit that even though I had a lot of fun with Slidrus and Ballistic, Inferno is my favorite game out of the three by far. But I kind of expected that to be the case. I had already pegged it as my diamond in the rough beforehand. I knew it was going to be good, but it blew me away. As I played the game, I got better. To compensate for that, the enemy variety and difficulty increased. To compensate for that, I had upgrades. To compensate for the power of the upgrades, there were boss fights. It's just a well-balanced experience. It's a really well-done game, and I really take my hat off to Luke here. He impressed me even when I was already expecting to be impressed, and that's not an easy thing to do. There was a recent post on the Radiant Games website where Luke talked about his struggles with trying to get his games noticed. He makes rather niche games, and to that end, Steam really isn't interested in featuring most of them. He's now embarking on a journey to make a bigger game and get himself noticed by the indie games community at large, and that's part of the reason that I felt like I wanted to make this video. I've really enjoyed Luke's products, and I want you guys to know about him. I want the world to know about him. I think he's a wonderful indie developer. He does so much with so little, 
and he deserves attention. He deserves the funding and the tools to do the great things that he seems capable of. I hope that you guys will purchase the Indie Royale, if not for the top three titles, then for these three titles. Because I, in the end, look at these as equivalents for the Unstoppable Gorg, Depths of Peril, and Toby's Vertical Adventure. You may not have known the names of these games before you watched this video, but hopefully now you've seen the magic that Luke can get out of some vertices and some bloom effects. I hope you'll take the time to purchase the Indie Royale if you haven't already, and if you do own the Spring Bundle, go ahead and install these games because they are very much worth your time. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.